Hello again, and welcome to Knock Off Bee Swarm Simulator. Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! In this game, you grow a garden, but this is no ordinary garden. It's a garden meant to pull the attention of little kids for hours on end. You can grow golden plants, rainbow plants, frozen plants, and even wet plants. Red plant, blue plant, one plant, two plant, it's all here. In fact, this game is so here, especially with its captivating grows offline that's all over the game's promotional material, that several other copycats have popped up, but I'm not here to look at those. Surprisingly requested by no one, I'm here to look at Grow a Garden because I thought it'd be interesting, and it's also crazy popular right now. So you just popped into the game for the first time. You walk up to the guy to buy seeds, and when you click purchase, it just puts the seeds straight into your inventory, right? No. Why? Because, well, this is a GUI and the server doesn't know about those. So, any shop GUI is handled by the client, also known as your computer, phone, tablet, Atari 3000, or whatever you're playing the game on. But all purchases must be handled by the server for them to be visible to everyone. What has to happen for a purchase to go through is the client has to use something called a remote event to tell the server to check if the player has enough money to buy the seeds, and if so, it subtracts the amount from the player's balance and places the seeds in what is called the backpack, which is the player's inventory. So let's talk about how the plants actually grow in this game so smoothly. There is a new service recently added to Roblox, and by recently I mean the last five years, called the Tween Service. This is a little different than the tween size function I talked about last video, because tween service can be used to make smooth transitions for anything that has a modifiable value. How it works is you create a tween, which can be assigned to a variable just like any other object, and then you play that tween on whatever you need to. The last argument of the tween service create function is the value you're wanting to tween to. Each plant has a module script that contains a set time on how long it'll take to grow, as well as the combination of tweens it uses to grow. This grow time will be important later. You know what else you should grow? This channel. You can do that by taking the watering can to that subscribe button. Unless your device isn't waterproof, which in that case, please use your hand. Each seed is an object called a tool, which is something the player can hold and keep in their backpack. Tools have a Roblox script signal called activated, which triggers whenever the player left clicks while holding the tool. Once the seed is activated, the seed script uses mouse ray casting to figure out where to put the plant. Each plant in the game is in the server storage, and every seed script has the plant that seed is associated with set as a variable. So the seed script just copies the plant from the server storage and places it where it needs to go, and runs a function in the plant's module script called grow, which will start the growing process. So let's talk about the game's most blaring feature that's plastered all over every single piece of promotional material for this game. Your garden grows offline. How could this possibly work? The game obviously doesn't keep your garden loaded the entire time you're not in the game. That would be impossible. What actually happens is the game makes an educated guess based on the growth times to find in the plant's module scripts on how much your garden would have grown in the time you were gone without having to keep the garden loaded the entire time. But how does the game know how long you were gone? We need to talk about how computers keep time. Computers keep time using Unix time, which counts the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970, which is the Unix epoch. This is the Unix time as I'm editing this video. So what the game does is it saves the Unix time when you leave the game using a data store, and then takes the Unix time when you rejoin, takes the difference, and that's the number of seconds that have passed since you last left. Each plant also keeps track of how long it's been growing for. When the player rejoins, the number of seconds that passed is added to how long the plant has been growing for, and then does some additional script magic that would take way too long to explain in this video to catch up the tween sequence to where it should be given how long the plant takes to grow. As for produce, they work the same way as plants. They have to find times that they take to grow and a tween sequence to make it look pretty. Speaking of this growth time, plants and produce actually have slightly varied growth times which is determined using a function called math.random. When a plant or crop is fully grown, you might see these things that have you press E on a computer or A on console. Those are called proximity prompts, and they can have scripts attached to them to do anything. The produce or the plants that can be directly harvested, like bamboo, are actually tools. Yup, that's right, they're actually tools. Tools have a special part called a handle, which is what the player grabs. When the produce first grows, the part that would be the handle, which is invisible, is named something else, to prevent the player from being able to grab it. 
When the proximity prompt is triggered, the produce is cloned into the player's backpack and the invisible part is renamed the handle so the player can grab it. All the parts are also unanchored. If a tool is anchored, the player will be unable to move when they equip it, which is a slight problem. Now let's talk about... Let's talk about the seed restocking. As you may or may not know, seeds restock every 5 minutes and each player has their own restock timer. This restock timer is handled by a server script in a folder called starter player scripts. The reason this would be handled by the server and not the client is because if the restock timer was handled by the client, it would be vulnerable to exploiters. And believe me, there are plenty of people, primarily bots, that would abuse that to spam restock the shop and get all of the rarest seeds. The timer is kept as an integer value in each player object, which is different from the character. There's another script that runs whenever the timer hits zero that sets the stock for all the seeds, which are also kept as integer values in the player object. Each seed has a set chance for if they'll get restocked or not. This is done by storing a variable called chance that's a random number between 1 and whatever the odds of restocking are. For example, if the odds of the seed restocking are 1 and 10, the other number would be 10. Then, an if statement checks if chance is equal to 1, and if so, the seed is restocked. If you notice, the odds of chance equaling 1 are lower the larger you make the other number. Now let's talk about how buying stuff works. Shut up and take my money! Well, we already talked about that earlier, but what I didn't say is that the same server script that removes money from the player's balance also subtracts 1 from the stock if the stock of that seed is greater than 0. Since all these checks are being done by the server, exploiters will have a much harder time cheating their way to victory. God damn it. Since I still have some time left, let's talk about... These fuzzy little guys don't actually have a humanoid at all, and neither do the ones in Bee Swarm Simulator, but that's for a different video. What they do instead is they use the LERP function on their assembly linear velocity, which determines how fast an object is going in each direction. What the LERP function does is it calculates the vector 3 needed to move an object to a specific point. All the produce in the map is in a folder called Harvest. The bee takes an array of all the objects in that folder and picks a random one to rip the position from to allow the bee to navigate there. What this also means is that the bee goes towards its target planet faster the further away it is from it, which we do see a bit, but not to the extreme that we would see if there was just one lerp function being used. The reality is that the bee's pathfinding code is way more complicated than just one lerp function, but this is the core of how it works. So that will do it for this video. What game would you like to see me dissect next? Be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Oh, and join the Discord server.